Well done for getting so far within particle physics. Not giving up yet. Uh, so now we're going to talk about the fundamental forces and bosons. So uh, when an interaction occurs, uh, there's particles that mediate the interaction. And this is the kind of weird part here. Uh, whenever you have particles sort of playing with other particles, so to speak, uh, you have these fundamental forces involved. And there's four main fundamental forces, and this is actually from your data booklet. So we've got the four main fundamental forces, which are right here. There's the gravitational, there's weak, there's electromagnetic, and there's strong. The strong one is the one that's a short range, but it's the one that's involved in the nucleus, actually. This one right here is a really important one here. This is the one actually keeping the nucleus together. Because, I mean, if you think about it, inside the nucleus there's a bunch of neutrons. Charge-wise, they don't do anything. Uh, but the protons, they're going to repel, aren't they? We say there's a Coulomb repulsion. Because if you have a bunch of protons in the center, in the nucleus, protons all have positive charge, and the positive charges repel. So there is a Coulomb repulsion, you know, because of their charge. So, you know, you might say, oh, that means that the uh, atoms should be falling apart because the nucleus shouldn't be stable. However, there's a much stronger force that's winning big time. That's why that's called the strong nuclear force. It's right in the very center of the, you know, the nucleus here. So this is the very, very strong one that keeps everything together. It way overpowers the uh, Coulomb force. We've got electromagnetic. This is uh, anything to do with uh, photons. And we're going to talk about this in a second. And then we've also got something called the weak uh, force. This is something that's sort of... Um, it involves these lighter particles. And then we've got gravitation, so anything to do with mass. Uh, then we've got all the particles that experience this. Now, we're going to say that we've got particles mediating this. Uh, and this is what's really important here. You've got different particles, and I think a way to explain it uh, is a brilliant uh, physics teacher that I know. His name is Ivan. He, his, uh, he's teaching at uh, Beagle Gymnasium in Denmark. Absolutely brilliant guy, and he actually explained it in a really neat way. I love how he explained this. He saw these particles mediating almost like having a wingman. Like, you know, if you're if you're going to go date someone, uh, let's say I see, I don't know, a girl or a boy, somebody you know, across the, the hall, and I'm too shy to go talk to them. So rather than me go interact directly with them, I would send my wingman or wingwoman, so to speak. So I'd send someone, you know, my wingman, to go and talk to them, to help to, to mediate this interaction. So I need one of these helper particles. I'm going to call it a wingman. So you've got different wingman particles here, okay? So your wingmen, those are the gravitons, those are these particles here we'll talk about in a second, and these ones. These are your sort of wingmen. That means that when you want to have an interaction, you have to send your wingman over to help you with that interaction. And that wingman can do a couple of things, right? They can, they can just go and do what you ask them to do. Maybe they sort of talk you up so this explanation can be taken, you know, a step further. And maybe they, you know, are really positive to talk about you. Like, oh, you shouldn't uh, date that rich guy. He's really terrible. You should date me instead. If the wingman said that, that's a pretty negative sort of effect, right? So they've affected the outcome. Whereas they could be really positive. Hey, you should really talk to that rich guy. He's really nice. Da, da, da. So in that, in that sort of analogy sense, how a wingman can affect the outcome, one of these wingman particles... These are called these bosons, okay? And in fact, they're often called gauge bosons. So these are, here are your different bosons. These are your wingman particle. There's these ones, these ones, these ones, and these ones. So first of all, we have uh, particles that are involved in the electromagnetic uh, forces. So things to do with electricity and magnetism. So in this sense, the wingman is a photon. That's just called a photon. So that's a nice easy one. Then for the weak interaction, we've got these different kinds of bosons. We call them W plus, W minus, and Z. Uh, this should be a W. They should have actually had a W uh, minus here. It should be a minus here. So we have a W plus, a W minus, and a Z, which is neutral. So if you think about it, these ones have to do with charge. So the Z has no charge involved with it. The W minus has a negative charge, and the W plus has a positive charge. So this is how these ones work. They mediate this weak interaction. Like I said, those would be like lighter particles, things like we all quarks and leptons. So to be honest, when we're drawing these things later called Feynman diagrams, they're mostly going to be relating to these ones. However, we can also do them with these. Uh, so these are your W plus, W minus. That's why I put them right here. So W plus and minus are called the W bosons. Then you got your Z zero, that's the Z boson. You've got your photon, right? That's another kind of kind of boson. Now we've got something that's really fun, the things 
holding the nucleus together are called gluons. Those are things that are gluing the nucleus together. I love that name, gluon. And then we've got these other particles called gravitons. And these aren't quite sure. We're not quite sure about gravitons yet. I mean, theoretically, they should be there, but it's really hard to actually detect them. So I didn't put them here because we're not quite sure about them. We should find them. You know, if there's particles meeting, we should find gravitons. So these are the what are called the four main bosons. These are going to be your wingmen, right? So I'm going to call it that. So these are your wingman particles. So if you're going to help mediate an interaction, you need one of these helper particles. Either this, 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 or this. And the main ones you're really going to be looking at are uh, actually, especially these and these. These will be the main ones we're really going to look at. Now we have an even more important thing, but also newer and a little bit less known, is the things called the Higgs boson. So Higgs actually predicted this uh, quite a long time ago. Um, he predicted that, well, if this, what's called a standard model, if that's the case, then there should be a particle that's responsible for mass, for everything. It's sort of, it's been nicknamed the God particle because it's, it's relating, it's how everything gets mass. Um, and we have something called the Higgs field. And as you pass through the Higgs field, that's sort of how you have mass sort of carry you around. It's not so simple. So, and luckily for the IB, you don't have to know the Higgs boson in detail because, to be honest, we don't know it in detail. Good news, it was discovered just a couple years ago. So it was for sure confirmed. A big part of the reason for the existence for this Large Hadron Collider, this LHC as it's called, that's all about particle physics, isn't it? Uh, so it was all, I mean, a big part of it was to detect the Higgs boson, and luckily they found it. Uh, so that's why we've got the Higgs boson, which is responsible through these interactions for mass. And all of these have mass. All these particles do. So that's why I love this joke then. Right? This joke is a Higgs boson walks into a church. The priest says, hey, we don't allow Higgs bosons here. Uh, and the Higgs boson says, hey, but without me, you can't have mass. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, so yeah, there we go. So this is, uh, I think, a really important way to sort of look at it. I think now then we can represent all the different particles and everything we have. So this is like a final nice review of everything we've been looking at here. So again, let's put together here. We've got these things called quarks, right? And we can also call these right here. Well, if we make things out of them, we call them hadrons. So we're going to put those there. And up here, we're going to have the leptons again. Okay, we're going to put those there. So I'm just going to repeat this. It's going to sound repetitive, but there's a reason. There's a method to my madness here. So we're going to have these different particles. We're going to have U, C, T, and D, S, B. Those are the different quarks, right? Up, charm, top, down, strange, and bottom. And remember, of course, we have the anti versions of each. And remember for hadrons, hadrons are made of quarks. And remember the definition of a baryon, just to make sure you remember it. Baryon is made of three quarks. Good. So that's three quarks. So if you have three quarks, you're a baryon. And if you're made of quarks, of course, you're a hadron. And remember what a meson is? A meson is made of two quarks, where one is a quark, one's an antiquark. Finally, we have the leptons. Remember, we have the uh, tau, we have mu, and we have the electron. I'll uh, put little minus charges on them. So the little charge goes to the top right. All right we've got these different particles here. And of course, we've got the neutrino versions of each. So we've got the tau neutrino, the mu neutrino, and the electron neutrino. And those are all these particles. So now we've got all the leptons. What's interesting, you might wonder like, what, what is the type of particle that's made of leptons? We haven't seen leptons make anything. They seem to hang around by themselves. So quarks can combine, right? Three of them make baryons, two make mesons. But leptons don't combine. We don't have particles made of leptons. They're just leptons, they just fly around. Um, now what I want to do now is put in these um, fundamental um, bosons here. So these ones right here, these main ones are here that we're going to use. So we'll talk about the gluon, which you write as a G. We could have the W plus, we can have the W minus, we can have the Z. We can also have the photon. These are the main ones here. Notice I've sort of put them around here because they can interact differently with different things. And then finally, so these are here, by the way, those are your we can write these are here, these are the bosons here. And these are the bosons in this ring. Um, and then finally, in the very, very center, we have these sort of God particle. This is the Higgs. The Higgs is responsible. All these ones right here get mass in some way. They all interact. So this Higgs particle is right in the middle. And I, I like this representation. I think it shows 
these, as far as we know, here's all the particles. Here's everything you need to make everything in the universe, so far as we know. Unless we end up like splitting an electron into different particles, then everything changes and we redraw things and physics gets exciting. So this is why I really like this stuff. I think this is a nice way to represent everything, uh, especially with these weird wingman particles, these bosons here, like the gluon, uh, like the W plus minus Z and the photon.